Hey guys, today we're going to look into new and refresh layer panel in Affinity Photo version 2. So here we are in version 2 of the program. And as you may notice straight away, the whole interface is kind of refresh. The icons are all new all around the interface. Things move here and there. And the biggest change in this overall interface is in our layer panel section. So that's what we're going to focus on today. So today I will focus on five improvements, five changes in this layer panel itself. If you cannot see your layer panel, maybe by mistake you remove that, you can always turn it on back. We can just go up here so we can see our window and view options that are the most important for interface customization. So you can always search for missing studios, missing panels within window here. As you can see, our layers we got checked means it's turned on right now as it's supposed to be. Some people nowadays tend to move the whole layer panel to the left. So that's kind of a new trend. So we drag and drop this next to your tool panel like this. So you get more space for your layers and also you can see other panels easily on the right side. So that's a kind of a new trend, a new way to work with the uh, photo editing software. It's interesting, but for this video, I will think I will keep it the classic way as most of my viewers keep it. All right, so it's exactly the same as on your computer. All right, we got our layers here. Let's start with the first big improvement. As I mentioned, we got the whole new refresh interface and in the layer, panel, we got icons within layers, as you may notice already. Take a look, I got multiple layers here. And the layer with the text got icon A. So this is editable text, artistic text. This one, this is shape icon, telling me this is vector shape. For this one, this one, this layer here, this is telling me this is pixel based layer with some kind of pixel brush strokes. We got imported image here. And I got little icon for the image. So that this is a new thing. We got icons in front of the layers indicating what type of the layer is it. So I think it's helpful. There's some people complaining about it. So if you are one of the complainers, you can fix this yourself. Simply go to your settings here, little hamburger menu, and you can switch off show object type. And you will have similar experience like in Affinity Photo version 1. So if that's something that bothers you, give you more visual clutter, you can switch this off from here. I will keep it on. I like it. All right, that's, that, that's the first big difference. Now we got icons that indicates the type of the layer. All right, what is the second improvement here? Now we can apply duplicates of layer effects. In the past, you need to use some kind of walk arounds, duplicate the shape itself, duplicate the image itself nowadays. You got one image, in that my case, this is one vector object here, rectangle. If I click on FX icon below, layer effects, I got this pop-up window with different effects. As you can see, I already applied two effects to it. This is exactly the same effect twice, outline and outline. The one below is black and is bigger. And then I got outline at the top as white. And I can even add more. I can click plus next to the outline to duplicate this again. And now I got one more outline. So let's modify the color of this guy and change the size. And as you can see, now we got outline number three. All right, so now you can duplicate certain effects and apply them multiple times on the same object, same image, same shape. No problem, just click the plus button to duplicate your effect. And of course, you must take a look which effect is at the top and which one is lower. That's also important. As you can see, this white color covering black and blue, and then black is covering blue, and then the blue is popping up only outside that black color. So also, the order of your effects will matter here. All right, so that's a new thing. Now we can duplicate effects in one layer. That's nice. All right, let's move to the next thing. 
I think improvement number three is really nice. This is our little brush history for just one layer. If you take a closer look, I got so brush strokes here, actually two different brushes, two different colors, two different sizes, right? And if I click on this layer, this is this pixel layer over here, it's a little brush icon next to it. If I click on that, I will be able to see which brush was used for this layer. And that's really handy because sometimes you finish drawing something with the brush, you move to the next thing, then you go back and you need the exactly same brush to add something little. And then you need to kind of remember or, or try which brush was that. And now we got this little history for the brush strokes and I can pick this brush and that will allow me to select brush tool and start drawing with the exactly same brush again. If I even pick same color, I got exactly same brush. Let's try a different one. This was that one, something blue. And let's try pick the brush tool. And as you can see, I can easily reselect the same configuration for my brush. Thanks to this little brush history panel now attached directly on the layer. All right, so that's our improvement number three, brush history panel on the layer. Improvement number four, I kind of took this warp layer as an example, but in general there are more than five, maybe 10 different life layers now. So they really went uh, this path to like non-destructive life layers. They improve on that really, really well. So there are multiple live layers now that we can keep in our project and use. What we mean by live, it's we can change it whatever we need. It's not like we apply the effect or filter once and then it's baked into the image. Live mean we can change some parameters, move some sliders and modify the the filter later as well. So the prime example of that is of course warp layer. So let's up, attach warp on this text here. So I select that and below my layer panel, we got live filters. As you can see, multiple live filters. Let's pick the mesh warp. And in that case, we didn't rasterize the text. Take a look, we got some kind of combination. So there is still a text layer that I can modify right now. No problem with that. And this is live filter attached to it below. And if I click on that, I can change properties of this live filter. So I can modify this. We can modify this by just dragging it around. We can add points to it as well. And this way we can use this mesh filter to change the shape of the object of the text, but it's still a live thing. So I can even hide the visibility of that, take a look. And I can see the original text and it's still there, it's editable. So there are multiple live layers now to use more than before and you can find them here. There is a live filter section with multiple live filters. Means that will not bake the appearance, they are live. We can use them to modify stuff around without like committing to the changes. Of course, we can bake them manually, but we don't have to now. They are live. So that's a non-destructive way of applying those filters. All right, so that was our thing number four. We got multiple new live filters that will change the appearance without committing to certain effects. All right, and let's move to the last improvement to the layer panel in Affinity Photo 2.0. That's of course our multi-layer clipping. Nowadays we can clip multiple layers into one combination. So that's nice. It's not that easy to understand at first, but after you start playing with it, you will know what's going on. So I strongly recommend to test it out by yourself. Let's say you want to clip this picture into the circle. That is easy. That's exactly the same process like in version one. So I will grab the picture, drag and drop into the circle onto the layer like that. 
all right and now I got my image inside the circle so the, the circle is clipping the image that's kind of the standard procedure you would say but what we can do now we can keep clipping stuff so we can take this rectangle as you can see I apply the blur on this rectangle and I can grab it and I can drop it but this time not like inside to clip it but on the circle itself like that and now we got multiple clipping happening at the same time so the circle is clipping the image but this blur rectangle is clipping the circle so we got like two layers on it and we can really build it up you can make it really complex and interesting in that case this blur is making this circle kind of like fade away so we cannot see the bottom part of the circle and of course we can go to the effects and we can control this blur from here it's a live thing it's not baked all right so the multi-layer clipping is a really huge thing and we could talk about it for an hour so i think i'm going to make a separate long tutorial just about that in the future so today we went through five improvements to layer panel in affinity photo 2.0 if you like to watch more Affinity content, check what I have made already. I think I got more than 40 tutorials about Affinity Photo, mostly for version 1, but many of those techniques will simply transfer to version 2. And if you are waiting for version 2 tutorials, they are coming. So just subscribe and wait for them. I'm working on multiple tutorials for version 2 software right now for photo, designer and publisher as well. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye.